All right, so our last topic today to cover is Q-Length visualization. So visualizing results is very important, and in the past this is typically done with link, eva link evaluation, so you can set up different link speeds that are shown or link density. And as an extension to that, the Q-Length can now be displayed along those links. So here's a screenshot of what that looks like. And this feature is now built into 2020, so you can display both average and maximum queue lengths. And this can be shown as the simulation is running and kind of constantly updating. And this can also be viewed after the run has complete, where you can want to look at maybe just an overall average of these metrics. So how can this be used? So this is really great for model calibration if you are trying to align your model to specific field data. You can also display that Q length, Q length length, like the actual length of that on a label. So that way you don't have to get out your ruler and measure each of these. Um, so it's just a way that you can quickly verify that. You can also use this just to easily locate any congested areas and see where spillback is occurring in the model. And best of all, there's no extra post-processing of data required. Um, having these large tables of data is great, but being able to just visually show that um, is even better. So let's go ahead and talk about the setup. So this can be set up on both nodes and queue counters once you have those added to your model. And you'll just select that edit graphic parameters for either of those objects, and then scroll down to the very bottom where there's kind of a section set aside for this queue length evaluation. And the first option to select is the show queue length checkbox. And then directly below that, you can select the attribute you want to display. So this is where you can select between the average or maximum um, and look at maybe the run as a whole or specific seed values. And then you can also set up the Q length color and you can show that Q length label. So let me go here to one of our models. So this right now is just set up to use kind of that standard link coloring. So within the links graphic parameters, I just have this set to use color scheme right now and it's just pulling the current speed for that link segment and just using one of these default speed colors that we have. So let me change this back to display types. And then to set it up for the queue length, again, you'll just select either the nodes or the queue counters and just left click to go to the graphic parameters window. And then you'll scroll down to the bottom and select that Show Queue Lengths button. And this has been running for a little bit, so you'll start to see some of those values displayed. And then directly below that, you can edit the attribute. So right now, we're just displaying the average maximum queue length for the current run that we have. Um, but within both of these, at the top, you can see where you could select just the queue length average versus the maximum, and then you can select the current run, you can select different time intervals within that run, and at the very bottom, you can also select diff specific seeds if you wanted to view information for those individually. And right now, we just have that queue node evaluation updating every 60 seconds, so you'll notice that these queue lengths will be automatically updated um, every 60 seconds. And then we also have those queue length labels turned on, so you can also see how long each of those are. And then one other thing we wanted to mention is that the way that the queues get calculated will vary based on how you have your approaches set up. So for this northbound approach, all of the turn lanes and through lanes are all combined on a single link. And so in this case, that node will just place a single queue counter down and just measure that queue for the approach as a whole. So you'll see here we just have one queue, 
that's about 196 feet. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit more detail, you can model the turn lane as a separate link itself. And what this will do is actually place two different Q counters down, so one on that turn lane and then one for the through movement and the right turn. And here you can see that the cues are slightly different and they each have their own label associated with it. So this is just another way where you can kind of get more detail for uh, that evaluation. So yeah, that's about all for this cue length visualization. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful to you when you're trying to view results in the future.